What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. It is finally time for another episode of the Never Seen It series where I give you my quick thoughts and opinions about movies that I've never seen before in my entire life. Do I love them? Do I hate them? But most importantly, do I recommend them to you? There's always a best and there's always a worst. Everything else kind of just falls in between. So what have I been watching lately that I've never seen before? Well, the month of November for my movie watching theme, I was focusing on Nicolas Cage. So the majority of the titles are starring Nicolas Cage, but we do have a few criterions because obviously the month of November, Criterion sale. So I wanted to watch a few Criterions. And there's also a couple of random titles as well. But we're starting off with the title, the movie that I loved the most. And that is City of Angels. Oh, I love this movie. I cannot even believe this was the first time I've ever seen City of Angels. You have Nicolas Cage playing an angel. Come on, what is better than that? He comes across Meg Ryan. Obviously, she's a regular human. She's a doctor. She's lost a patient. And that really rattled her. And she's starting to question herself. And Nicolas Cage, as an angel, finds her and just wants to be around her. He's falling in love with her. And it's just this whole story that is just so beautiful. I even remember thinking while I'm watching the movie... Nicolas Cage looks beautiful in this film, and he really, really did. I think the reason why I really enjoyed this movie the most out of all of them is because in this film, Nicolas Cage is not being Nicolas Cage, as we know how he can be. When Nicolas Cage gets invested into parts, he likes to create little ticks and little little idiosyncrasies that his character likes to do. There was none of that in this movie. It was straight up, straightforward, regular acting performance. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So I highly recommend City of Angels for everyone. If you love romance films, if you're a Meg Ryan fan, if you're a Nicolas Cage fan, obviously pick up this movie. So City of Angels, you were the best. You were the best of the batch. Okay. So I'm going to try to speed through. I know I always say that, but I'm really going to try. I rehearsed. I rehearsed. I had to refresh my brain because it's been so long since I've seen some of these, but I'm going to try to speed through as quickly as possible. So up next are a couple of the random titles that I watched in November. Black Friday. So this one was sent to me from a subscriber and it is a horror film set on Black Friday. And you know me, I'm a sucker for a theme. So of course I watched this on Black Friday. And I really love this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's a short film. It's only like 85 minutes, 80 minutes. It's only 80 minutes long. And the entire point of this movie is you have the store of employees that are working on Black Friday. No one wants to be there at all whatsoever, which is the story of our lives. We want to celebrate with our families. So no one wants to be there. They're in this toy store, absolutely miserable. Bruce Campbell is the manager of the entire store. And you have like this gigantic crowd outside wanting to get in. And what happens once they open the doors, customers are shopping, this like alien falls like into the store, starts taking over all the customers' bodies. They're like turning into these alien zombie freaks, whatever they are. So then they start attacking the employees and they're just trying to survive. But I think what I really enjoyed about this movie overall were all the stereotypes that's always represented in any kind of retail situation. You have the overachiever, you have the slacker, you have the employee of the month, you have the little couple that's having a romance, all of those. I loved it. All the different characters were represented. So I had a great time with Black Friday. I recommend if you haven't seen it, watch it. Not sure if you can stream it anywhere, but I really do recommend it. So put it on your list. All right. This one is so random, but this was requested by my father because his birthday is in November. And for his birthday, the one movie that he wanted to watch 
was Starman. I'm not really sure why it was a random choice, but it was a good choice for me because I'd never seen it and it takes a movie off my never seen it list and it is John Carpenter. So, hey, might as well kill, kill some birds with some stones. So we watched Starman. I wasn't like overly impressed. I mean, the story is kind of basic. You have Karen Allen who lost her husband played by Jeff Bridges and this alien. What's with the aliens? Why did I watch so many alien movies? You, <laughs> E.T. Extraterrestrials. I don't know. So this alien comes down to Earth and um, kind of like copies Jeff Bridges' body because that's what they can do. They can morph themselves. If they see a picture of someone, they can turn into that person. Are you following what I'm saying? So the alien sees a picture of Jeff Bridges and so he turns into Jeff Bridges. So Karen Allen sees this and like passes out. <laughs> she, I mean, obviously it's overwhelming. So then what happens, it kind of turns into like a Thelma and Louise situation because he, the alien needs to get back to a certain location because he's going to get picked up and taken back to where he's, where he comes from. Because if he misses this, he's going to die on earth. So they're going on a road trip. So it's Jeff Bridges and Karen Allen. The whole thing sounds so ridiculous, but they're going on a road trip. And as they're road tripping, they're getting to know each other. Like he's getting to know earth and what we do as humans and then Karen Allen is getting to know about alien life I guess and I could say Jeff Bridges performance is astounding as an alien I mean it's it's very difficult to portray something that you don't really have much to go off of so this is him just I mean I'm assuming him just creating what he thinks an alien would be so that was impressive I will say that but I don't know. I just, with the movie itself, the overall film, I wasn't like, wow, this is a great movie. It was okay. It was just okay. If I had to do a Carpenter ranking right now, I wouldn't put Starman in my top five. You know what I mean? Like it would be lower on the list, but it's an okay movie. I'm happy. I finally watched the darn thing so I can check it off the list. All right. Going back to Nicolas Cage, let's continue on with eight millimeter. I'd really forgotten what this movie was about for some reason. I'm not really sure why. I watched it way early in November. So it's been like six weeks since I've watched this darn thing. But this is directed by Joel Schumacher. I'd forgotten about that as well. I'm having like amnesia when it comes to these movies. I'm not really sure why. But this is a well done film. Nicholas Cage in this movie plays, he's not a, he's kind of like a PI, you know, like he's hired to find out what's going, like what happened to people. There's this girl that's been missing for like six years. A crime took place on a video and he's hired by this very rich lady whose husband recently passed away. This videotape is, that's how old this is. This videotape is discovered. He sees this crime take place on this video and the rich wife wants to know, is this real or not? So he's hired to discuss the entire plot line is coming to me as I'm talking to you right now. Can you tell? <laughs> Can you tell? I'm just remembering all of this. So the rich older wife wants to know, did this really happen? So Nicolas Cage goes off to investigate this. He comes across Joaquin Phoenix. I'd forgotten he was in this movie as well. I don't know. For some reason, I have complete amnesia with 8mm. But what I will say, this was a great movie. I really enjoyed it. The only negative I have to say about this film, it's not even the film's fault. It's how the character was written. Catherine Keener plays Nicolas Cage's wife in this film and I found her to be one of the most annoying characters I've ever seen on screen because her character like guilt trips Nicolas Cage when they're talking on the phone. When are you coming home? What? Like he's working. He's working. He's trying to solve a case. Leave him alone. Like she was getting on my nerves so 
badly. Like I said, it's how the character was written, how she portrayed the character, but I did not like her. I did not like the character of his wife at all whatsoever, but the movie itself overall as a whole, I really enjoy. So this was one of the better entries from the Nicolas Cage pile, I will say that. All right, here we go. Next up on the list, we have Outcast with Nicolas Cage and what's his name? Hayden Christensen. So I really can't go into much detail about this movie because I fell asleep during it, but it's not the movie's fault per se. I can't really 100% say that because I fell asleep, but it was very late at night when I watched this. I think I put this in about two o'clock in the morning. My mom was sick. That's when the entire household, we were all sick at the same time. I was watching over my mom. So I was staying up really late to make sure she was okay. So I popped in this to like keep me awake and it didn't. It didn't keep me awake. I fell asleep during it. But what I can remember is that I thought Nicolas Cage was miscast for this role. But this is one of those movies you can tell that Nick Cage probably cranked out 10 of these in one year to pay off the debt to the IRS kind of situation because this is not a good movie. You could tell. Like, this is not one of those movies. It ain't Con Air. It's not Face Off. Heck, it's not even Guarding Tess at this point. It's low-ranked outcast, okay? So you're not missing anything when it comes to this movie. The only reason I have this, someone sent this my way because Nicolas Cage is in the darn movie. That's the reason why. Don't worry. I will watch this. I'm not getting rid of any Nicolas Cage titles because he's my guy. It's like him, Sly. I need all their films. So I will be keeping this, but I don't know. I got to watch it again. So I will give it another chance, but I did fall asleep during it. But I think I fell asleep around 2.30. I mean, it was late that night. All right. This one is very recent as a release. It is Sympathy for the Devil. So if you are a major fan of Nicolas Cage and his tics, as I like to say, him creating little idiosyncrasies for his characters, you got to pick this up. <laughs> You've got to pick this up. So in this movie, it's also Joel Kinnaman. And Joel Kinnaman in the film is on his way to the hospital because his wife is going to give birth to their child. So he's trying to rush to the hospital where he stops. All of a sudden, Nicolas Cage's character gets into his car and you're like, what the heck is going on here? And this like mystery kind of like unravels before you. And it's very weird and it's very, very strange. But you could tell Nicolas Cage really, really enjoyed this part because as I said, he could really sink his weird teeth into it as an actor and make it his own, his complete own with all these ridiculous little things that he's doing. At one point in the movie, he, he went, whoa, like that. I swear to God, swear to God he did. And I said, that is so Nicolas Cage. It is ridiculous. And it was, it really, really was. You could tell he probably improvised the entire movie. He probably did. I would not be shocked at all whatsoever. At this point, Nick Cage has done over 100 films. It wouldn't surprise me if he could completely improvise a film. And Sympathy for the Devil might be it. It might be it. But you know what? I don't know. You don't need it. It's not necessary. Again, if you're a major Nick Cage fan, okay, pick it up. But you don't need it. You don't have to have it, but it, it it's entertaining. I will say that. Nicolas Cage makes it entertaining. All right. Now we have the ultimate, the Nicolas Cage triple pack. Finally got through this one. I picked this up at Dollar Tree when everything was still a dollar about two years ago. Finally, I watched this darn thing. So we have three movies in here. We have Trespass with Nicole Kidman, Bad Lieutenant, and Stolen. So if I had to rank these movies right now, Trespass, the best out of the three. Then Stolen, then Bad Lieutenant. So Trespass, that was a good one. 
they play a married couple in the movie and you have the assumption that they're really rich, they're well off, they have a huge house and everything. He drives a fantastic looking car and their house gets broken into because they know that they're rich and they know the money is there. And that's pretty much the movie. Okay, so that was decent. The only negative is that the film is only about 90 minutes, but for some reason, it kind of felt like it was overstaying its welcome after about an hour. After about an hour, it's like, okay, can we wrap, the, like, can we like, kind of like get to the closing point of the movie? It was kind of just, it was wearing on me just a little bit. It just seemed like it was the same thing over and over and over again. I know they tried to mix it up a little bit, but it just, it, it was getting kind of boring a little bit. Not by much, just a little bit. I, I'm not really sure what you could put in to make it different, but I just wanted something else to happen. Maybe another character. I don't know, but that's just me. But it's still the number one of this, of this triple pack. It's still the best. So my second favorite was Stolen. And in this movie, Nick Cage plays a thief. And he's like one of four that are all working together to pull off a $10 million heist which goes bad. It goes bad. They don't get the money. They're that close. They're really, really close to getting it, but it doesn't happen. And so what, what occurs is that Nicolas Cage like gets rid of the money last minute because if he's caught with it, he's really going to go to jail for a really long time. But because he ditched it, he didn't serve as much time. You know, you know what I'm saying? They didn't catch him with it. So he served left, left, he served, uh, he served less time in prison. So once he gets out, one of the other thieves that he was working with blackmails him. He kidnaps Nicolas Cage's daughter and says, if you don't get me that $10 million that we were working for a couple of years ago, I'm going to kill your kid. I mean, my God. <laughs> Woo! I mean, that one was good. I enjoyed that one. Maybe I would rank Stolen at number one, actually. But it was good. I enjoyed that movie. It was solid. I mean, less solid than a regular studio film. But we're talking like bottom of the barrel here. And then we have Bad Lieutenant. Bad Lieutenant, pretty much the title describes Nicolas Cage's character in this movie. He's just a bad lieutenant. He works for the police department, but... He doesn't have like any morals at all whatsoever, like nothing. He's doing drugs. He's sleeping with a prostitute played by Ava Mendes here. Like he just, he's corrupt. He's corrupt. He has no morals. But like when he succeeds at the job, it's like no one else knows what he's doing. He's getting like all these accolades and everything. Like it's weird. <laughs> it's really, really weird. But I mean, hey, it probably happens in real life. You know what I'm saying? It happens out there. So, but overall... Decent triple pack. There's none of these movies that I absolutely hate, you know, so I will watch them again. I mean, for a dollar, you can't beat that. 33 cents a piece. You can't beat it. All right. So now we have this DVD that was sent to me from subscribers, fan mail. So I was very, very happy to receive this because they know my love of the cage. And I feel like this cover is like changing the tone of my my video a little bit I'm not really sure why Do I have to keep it away from me but all the movies I just talked about are in this DVD pack but there's also a fourth film called the Humanity Bureau it's right there but the thing is I don't remember the movie at all whatsoever I cannot tell you and I watched it I think I fell asleep in the middle of it I really do I think I fell asleep but I cannot tell you the plot line of this movie. I think it's, yeah, it's post-apocalyptic agency determines which citizens are productive and sends the rest to New Eden. Like, it's weird. It's a strange concept. Strange. But you know what? I can't really judge it because I didn't watch it from beginning to end. I did fall asleep in the middle of it. So... I will have to watch it again. So I got to put it back on the list, but I appreciate the DVD. I do. I appreciate it. All right. Next up, we have the Kino Lorber title Firebirds. This is starring Nicolas Cage, Tommy Lee Jones, and Sean Young. So pretty much this movie, the best way to describe this is the generic version of Top Gun, because that's what this movie is. You have Nicolas Cage who plays a cocky pilot, Gee, 
where have we seen that before? Tom Cruise. I mean, it's not a new kind of character at all whatsoever. But look how young Nicolas Cage is. Look how young he is in this movie. Can you see that? Oh my God. He's got like a baby face in this movie. Um, so in this film, he has a prior relationship history with Sean Young's character. And he's trying to rekindle that very desperately, I, may, I might say. Um, this is a short movie. It's only 86 minutes long. That's it. It's like you blink and it's over. But like I said, it's the generic version of Top Gun. So if I'm in the mood to watch a movie like this, I'm going for Top Gun. I'm not going for Firebird. So, I mean, this one was just okay. Obviously, it's going to stay because it's Nicolas Cage. All right. Now to a movie I highly enjoyed. And it is Matchstick Men because it has not one but two of my actors that I love and adore. And that is Nicolas Cage and Sam Rockwell. I had no idea that this movie was directed by Ridley Scott. And this one I really enjoyed. They play, what is with all like the thieves that Nicolas Cage has been playing in movies? Like every single one of these movies, he's a thief. <laughs> Not really sure why. Or he's a victim of robbery or something. Anyway, so these two right here are partners in crime. And again, as an actor, Nicolas Cage has a little bit of OCD in this movie. So I can tell that he really had a good time creating those little ticks and idiosyncrasies for the character in this movie. I gotta say, there's two twists in this film I didn't see coming. I don't even know why. I feel like I'm seasoned at this point as a movie watcher. I should have seen this coming and I did not. For some reason, I did not see it coming. So if you love a movie with a good twist, this one gives you two back to back from each other. So I definitely recommend this was a good one. Matchstick Men, put it on your list. Put it on your list. Okay. We go up and then we go down. Okay, so we got Looking Glass. You don't need this. First of all, I'm just going to say it straight out. You don't need this. I think I picked this up a Hamilton book for like $3.99, $4, something like that. So you have Nicolas Cage and Robin Tunney. I believe that's how you say her name. From The Craft. She's known as the chick from the craft. That's all she's known for. They play a married couple in this film and they're kind of starting over like a brand new life. They recently bought this motel, I think in Vegas is where I want to say. So they recently bought this motel. It ain't brand new. It's one of those shady, like sketchy motels, like off the highway situation. It's one of those. So as Nicolas Cage, the brand new owner of the motel, He's walking around. He's trying to see like what can be done to fix everything up. He comes across this kind of like secret passageway and come to find out he can do a little peeping. I'm not sure if it's in every single room. I don't remember, but there's one room in particular that he can watch from the mirror. You know, it's like a two way mirror situation. So he can peep and see what's going on. And while he's peeping, crime is committed. He witnesses this and shady stuff occurs and happens and everything. But I got to be honest, I predicted what was going to happen and who was going to be like the villain of this movie because number one, there aren't a lot of other characters in this movie. So it was pretty easy to guess who was going to be the bad guy. And I forget the other thing. There's just one thing, one thing. That's it. So there we go easy predictor of who it was. That's all I got to say. So you don't need this. Again, you don't need to, I hate to say waste your money, but you don't need to spend your hard-earned money on this movie. If you can find it somewhere on streaming, go ahead. If you want to save $4.99 stream looking glass, but you don't need to buy it. All right, let's go back to a decent movie. <laughs> Gone in 60 seconds. Here again, we have another story of Nicolas Cage with kind of like a, a thief con man background. So you have Nicolas Cage in this movie that at the beginning of the film, he's actually on the straight and narrow, but he does have a history of thievery, stealing, things like that. So in this movie, his brother is in trouble. He has to pay back a debt. He can't pay it. 
So what ends up happening is Nicolas Cage goes back into the thieving lifestyle because the man that is um, not blackmailing, but the, the guy that, you know, that, 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 that's the bad guy in the movie. There we go. The bad guy in the movie that, that, that the brother double crossed there or whatever, whatever it is. So Nicolas Cage has to rely on this, this group of criminals to steal 50 cars, exotic cars in 24 hours. That's the payback for the mess up that the little brother did. Did you guys get that? I really hope you did. I know I messed up. I had it all in my head and it just went out the window. I'm not really sure what happened, but that's what this is. I gotta say, really enjoyed this one. However, Angelina Jolie in this movie, I feel does not get enough screen time. I don't know. I feel like she's kind of wasted in this movie. They play um, ex-lovers, like they had a relationship I mean, come on, like, can we build on that at all? Like they didn't really go anywhere. I mean, they went a little, little, you know, with that. They gave us a little piece, you know, but like, I don't know. I feel like we needed her throughout the entire movie and she was only there in bits and pieces. They mainly focused on all the men. And I'm not saying, you know, men, women, woke, whatever. Like I'm not going down that territory, but she was not really in the movie. And I felt like it would have been an asset to the film if she was in the movie more. That's all I'm trying to say. So that was the one negative that I had about the film. That was it. That was it. Overall, enjoyed it. Glad I finally watched it. All right. So we have three more Nicolas Cage titles. And then I'm moving on to my criterions. Okay, so mom and dad. Nicolas Cage in a horror movie, give it to me. This is the reason why I was so excited to watch this film. I believe this was sent to me, maybe, or maybe I picked it up really cheap. I'm trying, I think I picked it up really cheap. I'm trying to remember, but I was excited for this one. I mean, you have Nicolas Cage and Selma Blair, pretty much the synopsis of this film is the first like 15 minutes of the movie, normal, normal parents, two kids, one's a brat, you know, typical family, right? And then after 15 minutes, for some reason, all of a sudden, all the parents in the entire neighborhood, the world, I don't know what it, but like all the parents in this neighborhood want to kill their children. It's a very interesting, horrific concept. I, I will admit that, but I do have a couple complaints. No surprise there. <laughs> Complaint number one is that Nicolas Cage is not in this movie enough. We needed him more in this film. I mean, come on. Like, imagine your dad is Nicolas Cage and he wants to murder you. <laughs> like, that, that's such an awesome concept. I want him throughout the entire film. Now, yes, he was in about the first 15 minutes where everything is normal. They love their kids. Everything's fine. But then he, his character kind of disappears for a while and we don't see him. And then I would say the last like 40 minutes or so he's back in and he's there the entire time. I really enjoyed the concept of the movie, but I wanted Nick Cage in there more. So that was my first complaint. The second, which is the major one, the way this movie ends, you get no, like no conclusion and no answers and no explanation as to why everything is happening it kind of just ends and you're left like what why <laughs> the ending is awful it is not a good ending at all whatsoever because the entire time that you're watching the movie you're questioning why are all of a sudden the parents acting like this i mean you live for your kids you would die for your kids all these parents all of a sudden want to kill their children so the reason why is never explained. I mean, there's like a little, a little hint as to why they flipped the switch, but the actual explanation of everything is never given, never. And that is so frustrating. So if that was different and the movie played out with an actual ending that satisfied me, I'd love it. I would love this movie. But because of that, 
that was really lacking and it disappointed me. So this would be on the lower end of a Nicolas Cage ranking if I ranked every single movie that he's ever done. This is on the lower end because it did not satisfy me with explanation or the ending. So I was let down. I was let down. All right, now we have a score to settle. So I actually really enjoyed this one. Yes, this is like a quote unquote tacky Nicolas Cage movie, but I think this one is on the higher end of the tacky films. So in this film, Nicolas Cage in his past history, again, criminal activity, worked for a boss, you know what I'm saying? So when he's younger, something occurs. There's like a group of them that all work together, criminal activity. I'm not saying it's like the mob or anything, but criminal activity, you know, not doing good things, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. So there's one guy who's like the boss, the head of the group and everything. And at this point, Nicolas Cage is like very young, I think in his 20s or something. And a crime happens where the boss commits the crime, but Nicolas Cage's character takes the fall because he knows, I mean, first of all, that's what you do, right? Like you take the fall for the boss. You don't let the boss get pinched because then you're all screwed. You know what I'm saying? So he takes the fall because he knows that when he gets released from prison, which is 19 years later, he will receive a large payout because he didn't rat on anybody. You know, he kept his mouth shut. The boss didn't go to jail or anything. So he thinks he's going to get money. Everyone else is protected. Everything is good. So he gets released from prison. He has a son he wants to make amends with. He completely lost contact with. So you have like this rebuilding relationship story combined with revenge and getting his hands on the money. Like this was good. This was a decent movie. I would not toss this off to the side and be like, this is garbage. Like this was actually a surprise. This was probably the biggest surprise out of the stack for me. So I enjoyed a score to settle. I think I also picked this up off of Hamilton book. I believe if you can find it over there, it's very cheap, probably like $4 again. So this one is worth $4. I would recommend this one. And there is a surprise in there as well. Surprise in there. All right, the final Nicolas Cage movie. This is the one that I was very disappointed with, but I'm not going to throw it. I don't know. Should I throw it? I don't think I should throw it. It's primal. <laughs> I didn't really care for this one. You have Nicolas Cage who plays a hunter and a collector. Pretty much he hunts down exotic animals and he ships them off to rich people to sell them. You know, your typical illegal activity. So in this movie, he finally finds like the prize that he's always been wanting to get, which is a very, very rare white jaguar, which had horrible CGI or special effects, whatever the hell it was. It looked terrible. It looked awful. Anyway, it was so obvious. It was disgusting. There was no budget on this movie whatsoever. You could tell. So he finds the white jaguar, puts it on the ship, all the other animals as well. They're shipping out, they're shipping off. But on the same ship, there is, what is it? A political assassin. It's, of course, a political assassin at the same time as Nick Cage and his animals is being extradited to the United States to, you know, face his consequences, whatever. So he escapes. He wreaks havoc on the ship. Nicolas Cage is more concerned about the white jaguar. You know, like, I don't know. This movie was kind of boring because I really felt the runtime and it was only what? 97 minutes. I mean, there was no excuse to feel the runtime with a 97 minute long movie. So this one I just found really disappointing for some reason because I thought it was going to be really good and it wasn't. It just really wasn't. So you know what? I'm not going to toss Nick Cage across the room. We'll just do that. We'll just do a little like get rid of it. Get rid of it. I'm not going to get rid of it because it's Nick Cage. Everything stays in the Nicolas Cage collection, but I was let down by that movie. All right, so now I have four criterions to share with you. First off, we have 
Dance Girl Dance. And I believe this one was sent over from Jasmine because she is my Criterion Connection. Dance Girl Dance. So this was a great black and white movie starring Maureen O'Hara and also Lucille Ball. In the movie, they play a couple of girls that are in like a, a little dancing troupe, I guess, for entertainment purposes. And Maureen O'Hara's character is more focused on finding love and maybe, you know, just doing well with her dancing career, like whatever it is. Like her wishes are very simple. Where Lucille Ball's character is very selfish. She's greedy. She's money hungry. She wants to marry the, you know, the rich and the wealthy. That's where her focus is. And these two throughout the course of the movie become rivals. At first they're friends. They're kind of like sharing an apartment situation. But as the movie goes on, they become rivals and it's, it's deep. It's like a deep rivalry. This was really good. I think I enjoyed this movie the, the most because of Lucille Ball's performance, because we know her as Lucy and Lucy on TV was bright and funny and, you know, obviously so comedic and just brilliant where this character is just so nasty. You don't want to be around her. So to see that 180 flip, I absolutely love. So Lucille Ball is definitely the highlight in this movie and I recommend it. I really, really do. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. So now we have another crime thriller called One False Move. Fantastic cast. You have Bill Paxton, Billy Bob Thornton playing like such a character in this movie. Also, you have Cinda Williams as the main female character in the film and Michael Beach who is kind of like the, again, criminals, criminal partner to Billy Bob Thornton. There's a lot going on in this movie. There's a lot of layers with relationships and everything and crime and what we're doing. Bill Paxton is the sheriff in like this like little teeny tiny town and like cops from the bigger city come to his town and he thinks like he's on his, their, he thinks that he's on their level, you know, but he's really, really not because... The most criminal activity in Bill Paxton in Bill Paxton's town as the sheriff, there we go, is like leaving your porch light on after 9 p.m. You know, like it's one of those towns where like nothing ever really happens. But you could tell he wants to be a part of more criminal action because he wants to get out there and really do something, make some kind of difference. He's one of those types of characters. But this one was a good movie. There's a secret, secret in this film that I was like, what? <laughs> it kind of surprised me. So this was a good watch. I do recommend One False Move. All right. Now, I get my tongue twisted. I apologize. But you know what? You guys already know this and you're still sticking around and we're growing. So obviously I'm doing something correct. Okay. Third criterion of November the Day Trippers. Now, this movie could technically be considered to be a Thanksgiving watch because the movie opens with a couple leaving Thanksgiving from their relative's house and they're driving home. So technically, it's a Thanksgiving film. It's a good like Thanksgiving weekend kind of movie. But the main concept of the, of the film is that you have the wife who is the couple in the beginning of the movie the wife suspects the husband of cheating. So what happens is she goes to her family, expresses her concern to them, and they all decide, let's go to the city. We're going to confront him. So you have the entire family right here. The mom, the dad, the sister, the boyfriend of the sister, and the wife. They all get in the car together in the family station wagon. And they're off to New York City. <laughs> they're going to confront the husband. Are you cheating or are you not? And obviously that doesn't even happen until the very end of the movie. Because as they're on their little road trip to get to their destination, all these weird things happen. You know what I'm saying? Like they encounter different people and, you know, just stuff happens. So this is a fun movie. I found it fun and interesting because I'm a sucker for family, ensemble, comedic like weird situations. So I really enjoyed the day trippers. It may not be for everyone, but I highly enjoyed it. So if you're similar and you like family ensemble 
movies, then you should enjoy the day trippers as well. All right. I'm tired. The final movie we're going to talk about. This was probably my favorite from the Criterion watches. And that is Philadelphia Story. The talent in this film alone. You have Katherine Hepburn, Cary Grant, and also Jimmy Stewart. I mean, come on. These actors are absolutely incredible and amazing. You have another black and white movie that I just loved watching. I'm really loving, as I've said before, discovering the older black and white films and really watching talent because these actors were movie stars back in the day. They were extremely talented. So in this film, we have Katherine Hepburn, who is a socialite and she's getting remarried in this movie. It's like a couple of days until her wedding. Her family is getting prepared. Everyone, you know, there's lots of chaos going on. Everyone's getting, you know, ready for the wedding. And then you have Cary Grant, who comes back into the picture as the ex-husband. And he brings along with him Jimmy Stewart because he's a reporter that wants to do a story on Katherine Hepburn because she is a socialite and anything that they do, they have to report. So, you know, she could be picking her nose or whatever, and he's going to report it. And then there's also another random girl that's a photographer. So they come in as a pair with Cary Grant. And pretty much this movie, you're questioning who is Katherine Hepburn going to end up with? Because you have the fiance that she's supposed to marry, the ex-husband, and then you have Jimmy Stewart. Because surprisingly enough, Jimmy Stewart comes in as the reporter and him and Katherine Hepburn are kind of like, you know, hanging around with each other and they start getting like a little feeling back. It's a very complicated movie full of emotions and you don't really know who she's going to choose in the end. And I do have to say who she chooses surprised me because I thought it was going to go a completely different way and I was wrong. I was completely, completely wrong. So if you are a sucker for like love stories like that, where you don't know who she's going to end up with, Philadelphia Story definitely is for you. <sighs> My voice is gone. Do you hear it? <laughs> so that is everything that I've been watching or that I did watch in the month of November that I've never seen before. So comment down below and let me know your thoughts about any of the movies that I mentioned. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.